or I don't have to try to act a certain way or change the way I am. Besides lighting and composition, camera movement is one of the most important tools cinematographers use in their work. This evokes emotion, sets pace, and so many other things. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I use camera movement in my commercial work to tell a story. I'm gonna go over my camera settings, where I position myself in a location, and so much more. The commercial that we're gonna be going over this piece was a part of a larger series of commercials for a fashion and clothing brand. We are telling the story through a yoga instructor as well as a contemporary dancer, and we are going over what inclusion means to her in this whole content series. So we're basically in her space. We have one basically general location that we're shooting in and we're only shooting in one room, which is a very challenging thing to do. So because she's a yoga instructor and also contemporary dancer, the directors really wanted to play up movement specifically in this piece to evoke emotion in terms of what she's exactly talking about. And then we did this in the form of pacing as well as camera movement. So I'm gonna kind of break this up into breaking down these scenes and really talking about movement in between and then breaking everything down in terms of lighting, composition and why I chose certain things in terms of what the directors wanted to portray in this whole piece itself. The first thing that we're gonna do is start off with this wide shot here. And this basically tells the story of our entire room. If we kind of look at what we're shooting this on, so this was a combination of the Venice and FX3. In this specific shot here, we're shooting on the Venice. And then you can see that this is kind of toned down in that blue world that we're kind of really pushing here. So I have my camera's white balance set to 4400 Kelvin. And this really sets the natural daylight to this natural blue tone that we can really push in the shadows as well as highlights. And this is on the 12 millimeter. And the, this is the lower lens. And we're shooting open gate 6k on the venice this gives you that three by two aspect ratio that really dictates what your story you were trying to tell these are portraits of people so this really aspect ratio gives you that portrait-esque of what you would see in a film camera like a large format or something like that so this is exactly the look we're kind of going for in this room specifically in one of the other pieces that we did we wanted to really have a wide shot that was very interesting in terms of camera movement as well as lens choice we could have done the static 100 percent but this just adds so much more depth if you have movement on this. So we use a Dana Dolly setup, which is kind of standard in terms of just push-ins and push-outs and everything like that. But we had pipe and then we have the sled here. But between that, we had an 18 inch riser and then the camera on top of a fluid head on top of that. So here is my camera. And the reason why we did that is because we were using a 12 millimeter lens and that would basically see the entire room and everything in the track. And then in addition to that, we have this up on triple riser stands so we could get it higher enough to the desired camera height that we wanted. I wanted to really explore a different type of dolly in in terms of like the camera is pointed into the corner of the room. So if we were to draw a top down of this, these are the windows that we're looking at over here. Here's the door that she walks through and then goes across into the pillar and lands here. And then this is where my dolly track is. And then I'm pushing in this way. And I really want to scrape across the top of the room and across the things. And I've seen these done in a lot of TV shows. And specifically, I was inspired by Ozark. And this is something that happens when you become a cinematographer or do any type of work in this commercial field that you'll start watching movies and other things like a cinematographer would and really like think of how they did something like that. And I did a bunch of research and they use a lot of things like T-Rex lenses and a lot of like lens adjusters that allow you to get even closer to things. But this is what was achievable in terms of our budget as well as working with what we had by applying stands a track pipe and then this riser that we had all in house. So I could kind of scrape across the top of this room here and then get as close to that fan as possible to really add the depth and interest into this image that just gives us a very dynamic but subtle shot. There's a lot of things happening in here and this is the reason why we have the shot playing out so long because that the shot is just so interesting in terms of having the fans, you have the action of the door, and then you also have the action of her laying out her mat at the end there. So again, this is like a 10 second shot and this is something I wouldn't usually do in my commercial work, but it really worked in terms of the type of pacing that we wanted to do and the emotions that she's talking about in this starting of this piece. That camera movement and the way you compose your images just really dictates that. And specifically this slow push in, you could have done a zoom in post 100%, but I really wanted to have that perspective that we're moving into her space and her story as well. We don't have any lights really in play 
here, we're just using the natural window light. And then what I'm doing is an exposing technique that I explained in a previous video, but I am shooting this camera at its second base ISO. So it has an ISO of 500 and 2500. And I'm shooting at this and then NDing back into, so I'm adding ND, which is probably around 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 ND. And this allows me to expose for my space first and then kind of play with the levels and lights in terms of what I want it to really look for. I really want to have every information across the whole image, but what this shooting at a higher ISO and then adding a, like a variable ND filter to your camera. Obviously this camera has an internal ND. It's the same concept and I use this in a lot of my work and it is the exposing technique of choice I like to do. Shoot at a higher base ISO and then add ND because then I can really expose for my space first and then bring in lights that I don't really have to add any ambient tone. Because if I had a light in this room that was blasting up into the ceiling, it'd be super obvious. And with wide shots like that, you really can't add ambient tone. So that's what I do in terms of really exposing for the room first. If you're enjoying the cinematography breakdown and want to understand why we make certain decisions, as well as our process in terms of creating consistent cinematic images, check out our upcoming masterclass, Cinematic Lighting Foundations, which we'll be releasing May 1st, linked in the description below. Anyways, back to the breakdown. As we move on here, we go into the tight details of her practicing some of her yoga and going through some of her poses. So again, this was just the director's kind of going through the motion and then me finding a frame. So this is shot on the Venice and I am using a 50 millimeter at this point. And we're using the Nikon set here that I have in house. So this is the exact same position of what we were doing before in terms of having her lay her mat there at kind of like a 45 degree angle and you can kind of see that angle relative to the floorboards so we want to keep that consistent in terms of not having it straight and also i did that so i could wrap the light more around her in terms of not having something that if we were to do it completely parallel to the wall it'd be very backlit and very contrasting in terms of almost like a silhouette again those are my settings i'm kind of playing around with my iso but i generally set my iso at the beginning of the day which was a 2500 and then i just played with my indies in between and then if we do a top down of this this is her yoga mat kind of here and then she is positioned here and then I have my camera right here shooting this way and then we have the natural windows that are coming in here and I'm just positioning my talent to add to that as well I'm not using any additional lights here the only light that we use in this piece was the uh, match cut that we did across all of them which was just a top light so this is all natural light and positioning my talent in a specific area and, and also just time of day we did a location scout that allowed us to see where the sun was gonna be this was shot around I believe one o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon and this was during the winter so the sun sets a little bit earlier the sun was completely coming up and over these windows and then also giving us some sun back into it which we'll see later so my night light is naturally coming in here and then bouncing across the room giving me that ambient and then I'm exposing for my room and then bringing in a bouncer flag if I need anything here so this is giving us a nice highlight on the hand and then giving us nice deep shadows back into this so this is very natural, very contrasty. This isn't necessarily commercial. This is more like documentary narrative or narrative commercial work where it is supposed to feel natural and everything like that. And that was what the directors really wanted to do. But in terms of camera movements here, I kind of say static on this hand. And then in this next shot here, which is just back to back and landing in focus with her as well. So again, this is the same focal length and we're just going over a lot of natural poses and everything like that. And then you can see that the natural window light that I'm using right here. And then this is, I would say, your kind of perfect three point lighting setup in terms of having a key light, a hair light and a fill. And I will explain that through a top down angle through here. Again, we're going to be playing up on the, a lot of this just to showcase where you should be positioning your talent and just everything like that. So we have our key light that I'm using here, which is with this window. And then I have a hair light here and then you can just bring in, if you needed, a bounce to bring up the shadows or anything like that. And my camera is just off here. And then you could bring the bounce on this side or you can bring a bounce on this side. So I'm just gonna label this as my key. This is my hair. And then these two could possibly be a fill as a bounce. And then this could be a fill as well. 
but I didn't use that because the room was naturally kind of falling off into darkness. And then we wanted that really natural look, which is associated with high contrast ratios. If you look at the edge of her light side of her face to the dark side of her face, if this was commercial, this would be very high key and lit like that. So we get a nice rim light coming from the key light that we're using that main window. And then we get only really subtle Rembrandt lighting here. We didn't want to go too crazy on that. But if I just kind of like twisted her body towards the window more, we could even wrap that around more. But the directors really like this look in terms of high contrast and everything like that. And then that key light is highlighting the edges of her arm here. And then we have this hair light, which is giving us a bunch of separation from our background here as well as highlighting the edges of her arm there and then you could add a bounce here but then again this is all preference in terms of what you want to feel and also what your look you're going for which i explained earlier if we kind of play this back in terms of talking as a movement aspect we did multiple takes of this we had one where it was entirely in focus and then we had one where my first ac caught the focus at the end there so this was just feeling a lot more natural and this is the uh in terms of the edit what the director wanted to choose these moments are kind of like happy accidents we like to call and it just feels a lot more natural in terms of what this piece is supposed to feel like so we just have this slight pan from right to left just to add a little more movement and subtle movement back into what she is doing in terms of this calming ritual in terms of yoga and then we move into some more intense movements as she starts to do her contemporary dance and these are the dance movements that we're going to be looking at so if i just play this out and start talking about what we are actually looking at here the director's had our main talent here go through a dance routine and basically talk to the directors at the same time. And I shot this on a variety of focal lengths, which you can see here. So we wanted to really hit up the slow motion and really dive into what movement and everything means to her. And that was really portrayed what the directors wanted to get across. If we really talk about this in terms of a logistics standpoint, I'm just going to pause on this frame. So we shot this on the FX3 and then we kind of had to talk about this beforehand in terms of what we wanted to do. So we wanted slow motion. We wanted uh, regular speed, so I'll just say 20 FPS. And then we also wanted some slow shutter, which is known as step printing. So we wanted to do this three times, but we also wanted this at multiple focal lengths. What we did is we ran through this at a 24 millimeter, and then we want to do the exact opposite in terms of super tight at an 85 millimeter. So you can see that we had to do this run through this once, and then we had to run through this twice. But we had to do this run through it six times technically, because I did slow-mo at 24 millimeter, 24 FPS. So in terms of logistics and planning like this, you kind of go based off camera setup and work backwards off of that. Cause it's really easy to switch from slow-mo, especially on an FX3 to 24 FPS, and then also go into slow shutter. So we basically ran this three times with the 24 millimeter and then switched to the 85 millimeter and run it, ran it three times again. And then also did some other things in terms of actions and everything like that, which you can see in the full piece itself. Just for variety and everything like that, they changed this in terms of the direction of black and white. Jason, one of the directors on this, wanted to focus on the tight aspects of really changing the pace here in terms of heavy slow motion. So we shot this at 120 FPS and really focus on the movements and everything that she is doing. So what I did is we shot this on the RS3 Pro and then specific settings on that, I couldn't really tell you. But the important thing is I was in POV mode and I didn't have an easy rig or anything like that because I had to be very nimble and flowy as you can see. And then what I did, if we kind of break this down in terms of where everything is positioned, again, we have those two windows and then she is kind of dancing from here to here. And then I started in this corner of the room. So this is me. And then I'm kind of swooping in and then going back and forth like that. And the reason why I shot in this direction and not necessarily like that direction is because the sun was starting to set at this point and peek through the windows here. And then this is basically dictating my lighting direction and then shooting direction. We're playing with a lot of nice backlight and flares coming back into the image itself. And then what I did is I would push in with the gimbal and then have Jason and Justin direct me in terms of like, okay, time to move in. And then because we are in POV mode, I could just rotate around the subject, obviously, like the camera looks almost upside down at this point. So a lot of different moments where the camera is obviously off axis. And then while this was happening, 
we were catching focus and then also Justin and Jason were having a conversation with her in terms of like, oh, can you do this? And they were making her laugh so you can get these really special moments like this. This is obviously out of focus. And then if you look at this as a technical perspective, the shot wouldn't necessarily make it in the piece. But you have to ask yourself, what are we creating? We are really telling the story of this person here and they are sharing a lot of about themselves. So these are selections that the directors made in terms of all oh, this really relates with the piece and what we're trying to create here. So again, this was one of the wide shots that we used here. And then the sun is in the background here coming through. And then that was provided in a lot of the flares that you see here in later on in the piece. But then we did this at slow shutter too just to provide some differentiation between other things. And then you can really see in real time what that tilting in POV really looks like. And I don't see a lot of people doing this step printing or slow shutter on a gimbal. And this is the first time I really tried it too. And this is something I'm gonna implore in my work a lot now because it's kind of like the maturity of me using slow shutter. A lot of people just go handheld and whip the camera. And I've done that many times too. And it's very appropriate in a lot of situations. But in this situation here, we get so many interesting things in terms of like, we have a slow, smooth movement in terms of the camera, but then we also have this chaoticness and smearness of the slow shutter. So that was just something they really wanted to tell the story in terms of this movement and slow motion that you can see here. So as a cinematographer, videographer, you really have to really look at your tools at your disposal in terms of how you can elevate your story in terms of movement and specifically camera movement. This was a heavy one in this place. At the beginning of the story, we are getting into knowing this character. So there's a lot of slow movement, but as her character is more explored and she tells who she is in terms of the contemporary dance and how she expresses herself through that, that's where more camera movement come into play in terms of using the gimbal and slow motion as well as slow shutter. So this is the story that they really want to tell with the directors and luckily the VO was recorded before that and they already knew what talking points they wanted to and then they communicated with me with that in terms of what they wanted to do in terms of having really tight shots with the movement and also matching that with wide shots. So again we were covering our bases and shooting at a wide focal length and a tight focal length and then shooting three different differentiation of varying shots and you can say oh this would take a lot of time but actuality it did because we knew exactly what we had to do. We ran through it basically a minute each time, took a break in between six times. So in actuality, it took 20 minutes. And then in a reality, if you didn't plan that, we were like, oh, we should do it at this. And then you fumbling through camera settings. If you take these simple steps in terms of having a plan and doing proper pre-production, even though this is a very like easy story to tell in terms of just one location and then just getting a variety of shots, it just works out so well in terms of executing. And then we really finished on time and then we didn't really have any shots afterwards. And it feels really good to have a plan come together. So when it comes to camera movements and story, just plan ahead and then just really dial down in terms of the pace that you want to have across your whole video. And camera movements helps with that a lot.